Sing that last chorus one more time. Aren't you thankful for the precious blood of Jesus? Just one more time. Oh, precious is that flow.
Praise God. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Great old song. There's a lot of theology in that song. Thank the Lord for his precious blood. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn with me. Thank you, singers and musicians. Didn't they do a great job tonight? The Gospel of St. John. The Gospel of St. John. The 16th chapter, reading just a little bit more scripture than normal, beginning in verse number seven. Jesus is speaking and he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Verse 13. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. And I want to use for a subject, ministering just for a few moments here tonight, the need for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The need for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Would you bow your heads, please? Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your precious blood. We thank you that it's still flowing, it's still washing, and it's still cleansing and making whole. Lord, I ask for your anointing tonight. We cannot minister without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Anoint our ears to hear what you would have us to say. And Father, we pray right now that every man, woman, boy, and girl that is under the sound of our voice tonight, whether here or watching and listening around the world, that before this week is over, that they go through to the mighty infilling of the Holy Spirit. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. This was about 2006. I had been invited to minister at a church. It was only for just a one night service, it was a one day service, Sunday morning, and that was it. I really wasn't, I'm not really well known now, but I was really not known then. All we had was Sun Life Radio, and I was just getting started in ministry, and, and uh, I was still trying to find my way. I was still very green and experienced. And yet this particular church was kind enough to invite me to come and minister. And, and of course, I jumped at the chance and was very grateful that they would invite me to come and minister. I drove there on that Saturday, and Checked into the hotel and getting everything right and getting everything ready for the service the next morning. And the service would begin that Sunday morning at the regular time, 10 a.m. I got there a little bit, I guess it was about 9.30. And I began to greet those that were there. It was a small church, and I was greeting those that were there that morning. And as I looked down at my watch, I noticed that it was getting close to 10 a.m. And so I found myself making my way to the front of the church, sat down on the front row, and all of a sudden I began to feel something, and I began to look around and notice that there's nobody around me. I look over to my left, and there's nobody there. I look over to my right, and nobody's there, and 
I happened to kind of look back, not to make a scene, and just to see, and everybody in that church was crowded into the last two rows of that church. I mean, like packed in like sardines. I'm like, there's plenty of other seats available. It was a Pentecostal church, and they were crowded into the last two rows. And the praise and worship started, and you know how it is, how we Pentecostals do. The moment the, the worship starts, the moment the praise starts, man, we get on our feet, we clap our hands, we lift our hands, we worship, we praise. Some of us shout. Some of us, you know, we have a gamut of emotions, I guess, that, that, that we all come through. And, and yet, as this dear lady was singing, it was silent. Nobody clapping. And the poor lady sitting and singing was just standing there, stiff as a board, no emotion, showing no emotion, not even doing anything. And I'm thinking, I'm in a Pentecostal church. Nobody said a word. Nobody clapped. When it came time for the worship, I lifted my hands and soon realized I was the only one lifting my hands in a Pentecostal church. So the minister got up and he introduced me and I'm like I said, I'm still trying to find my way. I stand up there behind that pulpit and they're staring at me. I'm staring right back at them. And I finally just said, why don't we just lift our hands and Let's just worship the Lord for a moment, and let's just invite the Lord, the presence of the Lord into this place. And as I said that, they just, <laughs> they're looking at each other, they're looking at me, and I'm finally just once again, just come on, let's just raise our hands. We're in church, let's, we got a lot to be thankful for, we got a lot to worship Him about. And all of a sudden, I started seeing them doing this. in a Pentecostal church. And I'll never forget. You know, there are times that I almost lose it laughing because I see something in the middle of a service, and this particular morning I saw something that I almost lost it. It was a man, he must have been 40-something years of age. Boy, he thought he was the stuff. He come walking in there, he had his belt buckle on, he must have been that big. He had his little diamond stud in his ear, and he's standing there, his hands on that belt buckle, and he's just scoping everything out. Too cool for school, man, I'm telling you. And once again, I decided, and let me tell you, he had one of these hairstyles called a mullet. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Business in the front and party in the back, brother. Man, he thought he was it. And I was wanting to say, 1989 called, they want their hairstyle back. <laughs> and he's standing there. And once again, I made the appeal and I said, just look, come on, let's just worship the Lord. And I saw him and he did this number. I turned around, I said, oh, my Lord, I don't know what I'm getting involved, getting myself involved in here today. And I ministered, and I did the best that I could. But, man, it was hard preaching that morning. No spirit. I mean, nothing. The, the, the spirit of God. And I'm, I was pleading with them and just, I, I would say something. No response. Nothing. And the whole time I'm sitting here thinking, this is a Pentecostal church. And it's lifeless. Let me tell you something. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no life in the church. You need to understand that. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no life in the church. Fast forward six years later. SBN had just went on the air. 2012. My secretary calls me. She says, Gabriel, I got an invitation that was 
a little strange, but I wanted to run it past you to see if you wanted to accept it. I said, sure. She said, it's from a Baptist church. I said, what? It's from a Baptist church. And I said, did you tell them that I was Pentecostal? I did. And they said they still wanted you to come. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay. And she said, you might want to call and double check. So I picked up the phone and I called the pastor. I got him on the phone. I called his name. I said, pastor. And I called his name. I said, this is Gabriel Swaggart returning your call. And my secretary said that you wanted to invite me to come and minister at your church. The precious African-American young man, he said, he said, Brother Gabe, I want you to come. I said, you know I'm Pentecostal. He laughed and said, I know. You know I speak in tongues. He laughed and said, I know. I said, you know if I do come, I'm going to minister on the baptism with the Holy Spirit. He laughed and said, brother, we are Baptist in name only. He said, we speak in tongues just like y'all. I said, put me down. I'm coming. I drove there right outside of Mobile, Alabama. We got some folk here that were in that service here that weekend. I walked in. The place was jammed. You couldn't find another seat. They had to put out seats just to house and seat all those that were coming. I'm greeting everybody. I'm shaking hands with everybody, but still in my heart, I'm thinking, I don't know what, I, I really don't know what is about to happen here. I'm just not sure. They say that they speak in tongues, but they're about ready to get a dose of it with all these people coming. So it's about seven o'clock. I make myself, I go all the way up to the platform and I'm sitting down in the chair and right beside me, about four or five feet away, was a Hammond B3 organ. And I'm sitting there thinking, I think I'm in the right place. Right in front of him was a drum cage, four feet away from me. No cage, just a drum set. It was loud. But my Lord was a good. They had a guitar right behind him. So the pastor walks up to me. He says, well, it's about ready for church. I said, yes, it is. I didn't know he could play. I'm in a Baptist church. An old boy went full on church of God and Christ on me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on now. I mean, the very moment his fingers hit the keys. I got chills on top of chills. I stood up and I'm thinking, I know I'm in the right place because even before they even sang a note, I felt the third member of the triune Godhead show up into that church house. And the very moment he opened his mouth and began to sing, he sang something like this. Come on, B. Well, there are some things And there are some places in this old world I may never go But there's one thing There's one thing That I surely, surely know That I sure do know My God is real Come on for I can feel Come on now. him in my soul. Oh, yes, I can. I know my God is real. He's real in my soul. Real in 
my soul. Well, my God is real. War is washed. And it's made me whole. Yes, it's allowed for me. Well, it's just I feel go. My God is real. them here this evening just, just one more how time. I feel no words could say when my Lord Jesus you know he came took and my he sins. took my sins away yes he did Ever since that day, ever since that, ever since that, I've Since my Lord Jesus, since my Jesus, oh yes he came, took and my, he sins, took my away. sins away. Yeah. Ever since that day, ever since that day, ever since that very hour, ever since that very hour.
He's real. He's real. He's real. Glory to God. We had church that night, church Saturday night, church Sunday morning. We saw him saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost. I saw him laid out all over the floor as the Spirit of God began to move. Sit down. I'm here to tell you what I'm trying to say is this. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no life. None whatsoever. But when the Holy Spirit has his way, the church is a living, breathing, dynamic force that the devil doesn't want anything to do with. My, my, my. I'm telling you, my God is real. He's real. He's real. He's real. He's real. It's not a fable. He's not a fairy tale. It's not make believe. He's real. He's real. He's real. Now, Jesus spoke more on the Holy Spirit the last few days before his crucifixion than at any other time in his three and a half years of public ministry. And there was a reason for that. There was a specific reason for him doing so. He would tell his disciples, I'm going away. He was preparing them. You see, when he was with them for some three and a half years, he was the one that met their need. He provided for them. He ministered to them. He led them. He guided them. But yet he was telling them, I've got to go. But when I go... I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you another comforter, one that will be with you and shall be in you. He will be the one to lead you, to guide you, to help you, to minister to you. That word comforter, it means helper. But I want you to focus on something just for a moment. In John 14, when Jesus said, I'll send you another comforter, that word another is important because it means another of the same kind. Come on now. He is saying, I'm, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you back the third member of the triune Godhead. I'm going to send you back the second, the third, I'm the second, but I'm sending you back the third member. When Paul would use it in 2 Corinthians, he would say another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. That word another means another of a different kind. It's not the same. But when Jesus said it, he was saying it is the same. It is of the same. It is the third member of the triune Godhead. And it has been said any number of times before. As salvation is the God's greatest gift to the world. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is God's greatest gift to the church. And yet, we're seeing right now so many churches, regardless of denomination affiliation, that are resisting the third member of the Godhead. They're saying, we can do better. They're saying, if you want to speak in tongues, go out into a back room somewhere. We don't want to disturb anybody up in here. We don't want to offend anybody here with us. I'm sorry right now. I've got news for you. As I said it on Wednesday night, I'll say it again. The gospel of Jesus Christ is an offense. But there's three things. I know a lot of people wonder, they ask, why do we need the Holy Spirit? What, why do we need it? There are, there, are, there are many ways and many reasons why we need the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to focus on three here tonight if I can. Number one, go to verse number 13. John 16. Verse 13, they're going to put it up on the screen. Jesus said this, how be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you 
into all truth. Underline that too, or underline that word truth in both parts. He is the spirit of truth and guides you into all truth. You and I cannot know or experience truth outside of the Holy Spirit. Twice, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. He is truth. He is truth. He's not a truth. He is truth. Just as Christ is truth, the Holy Spirit is truth. And I want you to focus. He said all truth. It is impossible to know or experience truth outside of the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. The truth is not a philosophy. It's not something you find on a psychologist's couch. The truth is not an ideology. It's not a fantasy. And it's not just phraseology. But the truth is wrapped up in a person, Jesus Christ. Torrance said it last night. And I'll repeat it. Jesus did not say, I am a way. He said, I am what? The way. way. He didn't say, I am true or I am a truth. He said, I am. And he said, I am the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. I'm sorry to burst the bubble of the celebrities. All roads do not lead to the same God. Or I wish I had some Pentecostal folk up in here this evening. They say, it doesn't matter who you serve. All roads all lead to the same God. Well, let's just think about this for a moment. How many of you flew here? Raise your hand. You flew here. When you leave and you go to whether Baton Rouge or New Orleans or wherever, you just can't show up to the airport, look at the listing of flights and say, any, many, mighty, mo, catch a tiger by its toe. And just pick any flight you want to get on and expect to make it home to your destination. Doesn't happen that way. What's the most important thing that you need when you go to fly somewhere? You got to have a ticket because on that ticket has your name, it has your destination of arrival, it has your flight number, it has the time that you are to board, the time you are to depart, and some of them even have your gate information on it. It has your seat information on it. And you can't just go somewhere and just willy-nilly pick a flight. That ticket has been bought and paid for. And it tells you where you are going. Honey, when you got saved, Jesus bought you a ticket. I said he bought you a ticket, a one-way ticket. It is a one-way ticket paid for in full, straight to glory. And let me just help you. It's a first-class ticket. Woo! It's a first-class ticket. I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey gets sweeter every day. Jesus is truth. It's impossible. He will, he is the spirit of truth and will guide you. Guide means to lead the way. He won't lead you to error. He won't lead you to something that's wrong. He leads you into all That truth is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the truth. Jesus Christ and him crucified. I 
If you want to know anything about God, it's the Holy Spirit that illuminates it to you. When you want to know more about the Word of God, the Holy Spirit brings it to life. And inevitably, every time that a person seeks to know God more, the Lord will lead them to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I got a story for you. A few years ago, Keith was ministering in Crossfire, and he invited a couple. I never met them before, but I met them that night. They were sweet people. After the service, he introduced me to them, and they said, we've got a testimony we want to share with you. I said, sure. They said, it was sometime in the late 70s. Our son was 12 years old, our only child. He was killed in a car wreck. We were Christians. We loved God, but we didn't understand why this happened. And let me tell you something. I don't know what I would do if Jill and I lost one of our three girls. I don't know what I would do. They told me, they said that we went through such a depression. We questioned God daily. We couldn't understand it. God, why did you allow this to happen? Anger began to form. Resentment began to, to, to form. And they just got to the place where they just, they had a hard time being around each other and in their house because they would pass by the room of their son and their heart would break. But one day, the lady she told me, she said, I wanted to go see your grandfather. You got to understand something. At that time, my grandparents, my dad, they were traveling all over the country. They were hardly ever home. Going from city to city, preaching the gospel. She said, I didn't know if he was going to be there or not. But I brought a friend and we drove and see the ministry was not here at the time. The ministry grounds, we didn't even have a church. All we had was an office building. It was before I was born. And it was in a, a cross town on Goya Boulevard. It's a bad part of town now. But back then, it was way down over there, about 25 minutes away from here. She showed up not knowing if my grandparents would be there. She sat and waited for a few moments, and then she said, you know what, I almost quit. I just, I almost turned around and just left because I didn't know if he was going to be there or not. And she said, and all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I saw whipping around a corner a white Volkswagen Beetle. You adults, you remember those Volkswagen Beetles, don't you? You young folk don't know what a Beetle is. Google it. It's one of the ugliest looking vehicles you've ever seen in your life. That, that afternoon, Papa just happened in that white Volkswagen Beetle, pull up and get out of his car. She got out and ran over and she just said, Brother Swaggart, could you pray for me? I don't remember if she told him everything or not. I, I can't remember, but she said, I'm just going through something. Could you pray for me? It was almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And she said that the very moment that your grandfather laid his hand on me, I felt something I hadn't felt before in my life. I couldn't explain it. I didn't know what it was, but I suppressed it because I didn't know what to do. And she said after he got done praying, I got in my car and I drove home. And she just had a feeling that everything was going to be all right. Like I said, she didn't know what to do. She didn't know what to expect. She felt something but began to suppress it. But when she traveled home about a 30-minute drive from the office back to where she lived, she got out of her car, opened the front door, and her husband was waiting on her, smiling from ear to ear. 
She looked at him, he looked at her, and at the same time said, I've got news for you. He said, you first. She went, ahead, she went ahead and explained what had happened. She said, I was so excited, but she said, I felt something, and I don't know what it was. He said, well, I think I might be able to help you. She said, what? She said, whenever you talked about how that you were meeting Brother Swagger and he was praying for her and you said it was near 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He said, I went into our son's room. He said it was about 2.50. And I just knelt down and began to weep and begin to sob. And I just said, God, I don't know what else to do. I can't handle this. Lord, you've got to give me something. You've got to give me something just to make it through. And he said, before I knew it, I came to speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. She looked at him and said, whatever you've got, I want it too. God baptized her with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Anytime a person wants to know more about God, the Lord would lead them to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I want to hammer on this for one moment. Once again, God will never anoint error. The Holy Spirit will never place his seal of approval on that which is wrong. Now, demon spirits can anoint that which is wrong. But the Holy Spirit anoints that which points to Jesus Christ and him crucified. So you can't understand truth outside of the Holy Spirit. Let's move on. I spent a little bit more time on that than normal, than I should have. Verse 14, Jesus says, he shall glorify me. That word glorify means magnify, to adore. So in other words, Jesus saying, he will not elevate or glorify himself, but he will glorify, edify, he will point to me. If the Holy Spirit is glorifying Christ, then where does that leave us? Point number two, you and I can't know worship without the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Church, we as Pentecostals should be the praisingest bunch that is on this planet. We should worship him every time. As you know it, when we come into church, the very moment the music starts, man, we clap. I'm not speaking about emotion here, but I'm just talking about feeling something on the inside of you that has to come out. Something on the inside of you that just cannot stay where it is. When that song comes up, you don't know why, but you automatically put your hands up in the air. There's something that begins to bubble up on the inside of you. Now, I can't do it like Brother Larson can. But every time he talks about it, he says something like, I'm not even going to try it. Thank you. Come on, you got to do it one more time better than that. When the Holy Spirit starts to move upon you, something on the inside of you says... This morning, when we started singing, he that the Son has set free is free indeed. No more chains of slavery. No doubt some of you begin to look back at your life, where you used to be, what you used to be involved in, the drugs that you used to ingest, the alcohol you used to drink, the pot you used to smoke, the fornication, the life of sin and debauchery. But you look at yourself right now and you say, I belong to Jesus. I'm a child of the King. And something on the inside of you started bubbling up and you 
just couldn't help it, but you started shouting, Lord, thank you, Jesus, that I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. You don't have to turn there. They're going to put it up on the screen. John 4, 24. John 4, 24. Jesus is speaking. He says, those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Spirit is referring to your spirit when it is moved upon by the Holy Spirit. It is a reciprocating thing because as the Holy Spirit moves upon your spirit, you just can't help yourself. You can't. There's something on the inside of you that I just can't sit still. I can't fight it any longer. You came here Wednesday night and you started feeling something and said, I don't know. I may look a little bit crazy on that. Thursday morning, it just got a little bit, little bit more, a little bit more and said, no, no, no. I'm pushing it down. I don't quite understand it. Thursday night when Torrance was preaching, you started feeling it just a little bit. I don't know what's going on. Friday morning, as Bob began to preach, something on the inside of you just kept coming out. Tonight, as the Spirit of God is moving, you might as well just get in practice, and you might as well just start letting go and letting God. Can't help yourself. But some of us, when that happens... You just got to shout. Some of you, when it happens, you just got to dance. Some of you, when it happens, you begin to weep. Some of you, when it happens, your hands go up in the air. Some of you start saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of you start speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. I am a very laid-back individual. I am. I know I don't look like it. But ask my wife, I'm very laid back. Ask my family, I'm just chill. When you see me during church, when the worship is going on, I, you know, I raise my hands, I clap, but that's just me. But when I get out here and I start exhorting the people or I start ministering, I start preaching the gospel, sometimes... It starts right in here, and I begin to feel it. And I just don't know what else to do. As I'm ministering the word of Almighty God, sometimes I just can't help it, but I just got to run. I just got to run. You start shouting. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. You just feel it. You can't help it. But you can't worship without the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You just have to lift up your hands and just say, Lord, I thank you. Just shake off those heavy bands. The devil tried to take, he tried to take your shout last week. He tried to stop you from showing up this week. He has hindered you left, right, front, and center, trying to stop what God has in store for you. But you just need to tell the devil, devil, you ain't stealing my shout. You ain't stealing my shout. I refuse to let nobody steal my joy. I refuse to let nobody. Worship. Well, worship in spirit and in truth. I'm closing now. Singers, they're already here. <laughs> Last but not least, why do you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit? First, the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth, guides you into all truth. He, he moves upon us in worship. It's real. All my doubts have been settled, for I know, and I know that it's real. Last but not least, turn to Acts 1-8. 
the last reason why you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, right before he ascended into heaven, gave this command. Begin in verse number 4, Acts 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them, underline that, commanded, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Which said he, you have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Go down to verse 8. But you shall receive what? Power. Power. You shall receive after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. The last reason why you need the Holy Spirit, you need power. You need power. You need power to walk right. You need power to talk right. You need power to live right. You are facing real demonic forces that you in your own strength and ability cannot muster up to. You need a greater power source. You need a greater power force working inside of you. You need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And let me help you. Jesus said it. You shall receive after not before, after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. To answer this question, yes, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit takes up residence to live inside of you, to dwell inside of you, but it is for regeneration. He cleans you up. He begins the sanctification process to clean you up. But we are talking about spirit baptism. At salvation, the Holy Spirit baptizes you, places you into Christ. But at spirit baptism, Jesus baptizes you with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You and I need power. This word power means miracle working power. Miracle working power. That means what you read about in the Gospels and what you read about in the book of Acts, the same power that worked through Christ, that raised Christ from the dead, now lives and resides in you. That's power. We need power. Power. For what? Miracles, signs and wonders, to see sicknesses healed, diseases healed, cancers healed, AIDS healed, to see the spiritual deaf and the spiritual dead come alive, to see the physical dead come alive. We need the power of the Holy Spirit working inside of us to help us do what God has called us to do. I've got news for you. Without the infilling of the Holy Spirit, little or nothing can be done for the cause of Christ. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to do and to accomplish what Jesus Christ has called us to do. We all have a call. The Lord's giving you the interpretation. Just give it to us quickly, please. There is a river. There is a river. Everywhere this river goes, there is life. The river is flowing. It has been flowing for the very foundations of the world. Get in. What you have been of is here. Get into the river. There is life. There is life. 
Get in. There's life in the river. Stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. I want them to play something softly real quick. I'm not going to ask for you to bow your heads or close your eyes. I'm just going to make this one simple altar call. If you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Gabe, I haven't yet received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, just raise that hand right now. Come on, raise it. There's a hand. There's a hand. Hands are going up all over this building. How many would say, Pastor Gabe, I'm saved and I've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, but I need a refilling. I ha it hasn't been flowing like, like it should, and I need a refilling. Raise that hand. Come on, if you raise that hand, make your way down to this front right now. Come on down. Just sing it right now. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are Come on right now. Come as close as you can Give to this one. With your power. Inside of me. Let me have some of our altar workers. Y'all come on, all our pastors, come on right now. Just make your way as close as you can. Right now, just come on. We are in your presence. We are in your presence. It's going to be hard, but give me some spirit-filled believers. I need some spirit-filled believers just to get out of your seats right now. Make your way through this crowd right now and start laying hands or just standing behind someone. I need a man behind a man, woman behind a woman. Just find somebody. Don't lay hands on them yet, but just stand behind them. Just come as close as you can. Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Come on, give me some spirit filled believers to come. Just get out of your seats right now. Sing it one more time. Just find your way through and stand behind someone. And welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. ask you to sing that song there is a river in just a moment I want every one of you that came forward just to look at Pastor Gabe for a second this goes for each and every one of you that are watching and listening we're not excluding you this altar call is including you as well I'm going to give you some very simple instructions on how to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit the same instructions that I heard as an eight-year-old boy standing right over here when my father laid hands on me and, and when he did I was just going to pray for my brother but when I began to pray for my brother I felt the presence of God come all over me and it just began to flow like a river and I remember tears running down my cheeks my father looked at me and said Gabriel raise your hands the Spirit of God is all over you and begin to speak what you sense and feel and I mean, it just came out like a river. The only, there's several instructions, but first of all, the only requirement for you to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit is to be saved. You don't have to belong to Crossfire. You don't have to belong to Family Worship Center. You don't have to belong to Sunlight Broadcasting Network. You don't even have to belong to your local church. Just belong to the body of Christ. That's the only requirement is to be saved. In a moment, I'm going to get you to raise your hands as a sign of surrender. Whenever you do, we're going to just say a simple prayer. And when we say this simple prayer, you're going to begin to sense words and languages right here in your innermost being. Now, here's where the faith comes in, which I will explain in just a moment. 
Open your mouth and yield your tongue and begin to speak what you sense and feel. I mentioned to you that it's by faith. It's not by intellectualism. You can't think this through. It's by faith. The same way that you accepted Christ was by faith. It's the same way that you received the infilling of the Holy Spirit by faith. Now, what are tongues? Tongues are a language known and spoken somewhere on this planet, but not yet known to you. It's not gibberish. It's not a made-up language. It's not fake. It is a legitimate language that either is being spoken or has been spoken in times past that you just don't know. If you're Spanish, you won't speak Spanish. It'll be a different language that you begin to sense and feel right here in your innermost being. Jesus said, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Secondly, you may ask, what do we say when we speak in tongues? According to Acts chapter 2, you're speaking the wonderful works of God. That's what you're speaking. The wonderful works of God. I want you to raise your hands right now. Those that are watching and listening, you may say that nobody's here to lay hands on me. Oh, yes, there is. You've got Jesus Christ there. He's right there to lay hands on you. You don't have to be here. Just watch it right there. Jesus is right there with you. We're going to pray right now, and I want you to pray a simple prayer. And the only prayer in English that I want you to pray is this. Father, in the name of Jesus, by faith, I receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That's the only prayer in English we want you to pray right now. Let's begin to cry out to him and let's pray. Father, right now, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. This evening, right now, we ask that the Spirit of God begin to descend, begin to touch every man, woman, boy, and girl. Lord, let us have another book of Acts experience. Let us have an and suddenly experience. And right now, by faith, we claim it, we believe it, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now begin to lay hands on them right now. Sing it right now. There is a river. That's it right there. Just begin to speak it right now. That's it right there.
is a vast supply. just worship him right now just let him fill you wherever you may be just let him touch you wherever you may be by television by radio by internet just let him touch you let him fill you right now those in the audience moms and dads youth workers youth pastors let him give you a fresh touch of the anointing of the holy spirit right now just lift up your hands right now and just start asking lord give me an anointing lord i'm seeking an anointing of the holy spirit to reach this generation for the cause of Christ. That's it. There is a river whose stream Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice tonight before we dismiss I want you to look at Pastor Gay for a moment you came here tonight some of you received it those of you that did use it every day it's your prayer language but for those of you that came here tonight and you said you know what I didn't get it don't grow discouraged. Tomorrow night is your night. And what if you say, well, I didn't... Tomorrow night comes and goes and you say, well, I didn't get it. Well, don't worry about it. Sunday's on the way. What am I saying? I'm saying this. 
You may not have got it tonight, but don't quit seeking for it. Because it'll come whenever you least expect it. I'm telling you, isn't God good tonight? You should go out of this place rejoicing, shouting, praising God. And church, let me tell you, you've got something worth holding on to. You've got something worth fighting for. And whenever you leave this place, rejoice and believe God and just thank God for what he's done for you, okay? Don't miss the late night activities following the service. Park your cars here. Walk across the walkways. Stay and pray as long as you want. But we're going to go out of here rejoicing. Tell your neighbor you love them. Be back with us in the morning, 10 a.m. Brother Keith Babin will be ministering. You don't want to miss it. God bless you. Tell your neighbor you love them.